Hey, greetings, it's, uh, Brian, and I have kind of an OTDR unboxing here. Um, <clears throat> this is an OTDR tester I got from uh, Amazon. It's a Chinese manufactured one, and as you can see, it's got some cool stuff here in the box. We had a <laughs> Chinese calibration certificate for however good that is. Um, and it's fairly compact. This came, you know, two days from Amazon, basically. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know if it's that great of a calibration certificate. So it comes in a pretty nice uh, actual little enclosure there. A um, little quick guide manual in the bottom of the box. And uh, really, that's about it. Uh, I'm probably not even going to keep the box uh, if I decide, you know, assuming I'm keeping this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, they must all print these these Chinese manuals in the same factory, um, or at least have the same editor. They're they're all pretty bad. Uh, English has gotten a little bit better, but the lack of hyphenation, things like that, it's kind of funny. But you know, it's got the basic overview in it, and you can actually download this uh, online as well. So <clears throat> it's got the basic stuff in there. What else do you need a manual for? And uh, so this is the case it came in. Uh, it's actually kind of cool. It, it's it's got enough space to do other stuff in the case. Um, just trying to open this with the, you know, one hand here. Uh, and uh, my uh, unfortunately, I don't have my tripod anymore for holding my phone, and that's what I was using to record this. So it's not the uh, ideal way of doing it, but. Yeah, so, uh, you know, as you can see here, uh, it's got, got a bunch of stuff in it coming from the factory. And opening it up, we have, obviously, you know, I guess an interconnect cable. I'm not going to call it a launch cable because it's not. Uh, it does have some calibration stuff on it uh, as to uh, what's there. Um, and, yeah, it's just a you know, thread-on one. I think those are the, um, the S... ST connectors. Um, well, ST, I think, is the bayonet ones. Comes back fairly well. It's got uh, <clears throat> it's got some stuff. A uh, little bit, you know, considering where this came from, I'm happy with that. Uh, it did have this annoying cli cling film on it. Uh, I ended up having to grab a pair of scissors here to get that off. And, uh, you know, once I did that, it comes off pretty easily. <clears throat> Uh, as you can see here, uh, so I like the uh, the rubber uh, that it has on it, and I'll go through the accessories or accoutrement it comes with next. Uh, you know, some cheapo fiber cleaning stuff, which you know they didn't have to put it in there, but they did, so that's cool. Uh, UPC to APC, uh, that's uh, stands with the polishing on it. I won't get into all the details there, but it's just uh, UPC is blue, APC is green, and they won't work. Uh, <clears throat> so this is, a, of course, the ubiquitous USB-C to USB-A power cable, and that's for doing the Ethernet testing. Uh, you put that on one end, and it'll tell you where your, your pairs are crossed and so on and so forth. Uh, it's got a pretty good variety of different uh, uh, launch ports here and some uh, uh, jumpers and uh, things to uh, connect with. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. It's got LC, SC, ST, and um, oh, there's another one I'm missing in there. Uh, I think it's SC, Sam Charlie. Uh, again, hybrid adapter here so you can get your LC into your um, uh, VFL ports um, or your uh, power meter port. Um, and yeah, that's about all. Uh, but, you know, it's got extra space in there. I mean, it, it wasn't completely full like a lot of the, you know, purpose manufactured cases are. So I really like that. Um, I'm actually going to keep an SD card in there. Um, so this is put together pretty well. I, I, it's got a nice big battery on it, too. Um, this is important. you got to remove this uh, before you use it. Uh, it did mention that. Uh, <laughs> On, online that you need to do that. I just figured, ah, I remembered it now. But yeah, if you take a look at the battery here, it is a um, 4,000 milliamp hour uh, lithium ion battery. So I haven't done any testing on it yet, but you know, I'm assuming it's going to be pretty good uh, in terms of power. You know, hopefully it'll keep it powered for you know 
you know, 30 minutes an hour or something like that. <laughs> and this, I get to pull this off. Everybody hates when I do this. I, I Some people love keeping that stuff on until it gets totally dog-eared. Uh, it does appear there's a screen protector on there as well. And so there's your uh, VFL or VLS, physical locator, power meter, and then your OTDR port is right there. Uh, and again, that's, you know, change that out. Uh, it comes with the, uh, the SC connector on it. Uh, this is the LAN port for connecting to LAN. It'll also do TDR uh, on that, um, which is weird because the other test port uh, that I'm going to show right here uh, does the same thing on the bottom. Uh, but this is this will show you with that dongle uh, where your lines are crossed. It's also your USB-C charging port, and uh, it has a, a mini flash card port in there for that. This is kind of cool. I was I was actually taken back by this. I didn't know this. Uh, so you can actually power like anything from this if you use the USB C to USB A cable. Um, it's wild. Uh, it, so this is technically a power bank too. Uh, it is the world's shiniest screen though. So trying to get good video of this. Wanlu Tech. Uh, you can email them for support. So. Uh, boots up here and uh, okay. should pop up pretty easily. Uh, let me get something to prop this up. Uh, it's not the fastest uh, one, but uh, I'm trying to get the, a better view on it here. And, you know, first things first, let's pop up the OTDR here. Uh, shut off my light so I can get a little better picture of it. Um, and I had previously put together an OTDR uh, reading on here. It stores it in the standard format, which is pretty cool. Um, and this is just a short little cable I had laying around the, uh, the apartment and, uh, or the house. Different wavelengths. It's all, you know, very easily configurable. Um, and file export. What's cool is you can actually save this as a PDF right on here. It's kind of a rudimentary PDF, but, um, so we'll pull up the, uh, the VFL. Uh, and this was, I actually spent a little more time on the VFL than I did on the OTDR. Um, it's, uh, uh, you, you actually have to turn it on uh, in the, um, yeah, if you hit the, the lighting mode button, you'll come on and it's CW. Uh, the other thing you can do here is uh, if you hit one hertz, it'll flash at one hertz. Uh, and it also has a two hertz mode, which is kind of nice. Uh, so, uh, uh, of course, for me, the, the, the screen and the, Output not being in perfect sync irritated me, but <laughs> so when you go to exit, it says whether backstage continues to run. What the fuck? Um, so this is if you want it to run in the background. Uh, so if you exit the application, it shuts off the VFL. Uh, if you have it turned on, for example, and you you know you get the VFL running on one fiber, but you're doing OTDR on the other one. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. So I'm I'm. Like I said, very, uh, very taken with, uh, you, know, you know, the user interface here works very well. Uh, it does have the uh, uh, the OPM and relative power, so you can do an optical loss test. Uh, basically, use the output from uh, your, uh, uh, your OTDR uh, port to your OPM port uh, and just shove it in there, and it'll give you a reading. Uh, you can switch to different wavelengths. And our uh, next thing uh, I'll go into here <clears throat> is you know, some of the network level testing you can do here. You have uh, two network interfaces. Uh, the one at the bottom is just for testing. Uh, the one at the top, of course, is an actual, you know, this gets an IP address and gets online. Um, so, for example, I have it set to DHCP, pull the DHCP address. <laughs> And I can do a port scan or a ping scan in my network and see, hey, what's there? And it does it pretty fast. Uh, it'll actually pull out the manufacturer MAC address too, which is kind of neat. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll do a, I'm assuming they just have a front end to end map or something. I'll, I'll do a port scan here, one of the Linux boxes I have on my network. Um, and I mean, this takes forever to do, but uh, you can stop it early. So I just demonstrating that it's a cool thing to have like i wasn't expecting that to be in here um this is actually handy uh it'll show your your lan status and everything if you're connected um and because it's a linux box well 
it just says LLDP, right? Um, then, of course, you see my wonderful micro tick switch it's connected to. <clears throat> and uh, you can even do PO, PPOE. I assume that's a little more typical Chinese, uh, you know, uh, that's uh, uh, going to be running PPOE. Uh, it's not very common in the U.S. anymore outside of maybe some lower rent wisps and DSL, if that's still a thing. Uh, it's the last time I touched any PPOE. Um, and it, okay, what Chinese test equipment would not be, you know, complete without a light? And that's just, it's, I, I don't know why they, they put flashlights and everything. This is kind of neat. This is the, um, the file manager and you can see it's definitely Linux lost plus found. Um, and it also has, uh, your SD card here. Um, and you know, clearly it's Linux, uh, this, this matches up. Uh, which is the way Linux does things. Um, and then uh, you can actually connect a disk to it as well. Um, and it'll do, uh, it, it'll mount the disk, which is you know, is pretty cool. So I'm assuming it'll work with anything. Uh, I just tried fat, but um, uh, didn't try any Mac disks. So if you go in here, hooked up to the OTDR port, you can actually generate two different wavelengths of light. Um, I do wish this gave the power output in a calibrated manner. It doesn't. Um, you just can select zero to 100%. So you have to loop it back. Um, this is the RJ45 OTDR. So this is when you're plugged into the top uh, of the device. Uh, and when you're connected, in this case, I'm just connected to a switch. It just says, hey, you're online. I can't do an OTDR test. Um, but I will, uh, uh, you know, disconnect it. It'll rerun it here and it shows it's open. I don't know why the difference is. Uh, I am using thin cable. It's a fairly short cable too. So, um, and you can get the same output and same reading from the, uh, the regular cable tester as well. This is if you're plugged in on the bottom. Again, not the most responsive device. Um, and, you know, in this case, uh, comes up shows hey it's totally open but you'll see it does have the cable length 2.1 meters and you know uh, it is I did catch this it's set up by default for shielded twisted pair so if you put the dongle on it it's still going to show an error but uh, get the dongle on here there we go and I'll kick it here to UTP mode and hey everything is good which I hope so it's a commercially made patch cable so um, it's not, I thought it might be an Android OS. It doesn't feel like Android. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, it's something, this is neat. This is, I thought this is an FIP or something. Apparently this requires some third party USB device. Uh, but it will do a fiber inspection port if you do have it. I'm, I'm waiting on some details to get that. <clears throat> And uh, there's the FTP server on here as well, uh, which is kind of neat. Uh, if you did want to uh, go into uh, just you know putting it on a network, getting files directly from it, uh, I think that's quite frankly really handy. Um, it, the screen looks a whole heck of a lot better in person too. Uh, it's just it's hard to record these sorts of screens with any sort of decent camera or. Well, in this case, not a decent camera, a phone. Um, so I'll show a little bit around here. You know, I got my USB plugged in to charge it. Again, in the bottom there, just for testing, that's the, the cable test report. Um, and I don't know what these the connector is called. It's kind of a standard connector used for the, um, the OTDR ports. Almost everything has these. Uh, and it comes with some, uh, some jumpers, uh, and some, uh, adapters, uh, from, you know, SC to ST, so on and so forth here. Um, and, uh, it supports the four major ones you're going to see in the field. Uh, you just can change them out right on the device itself. Um, pretty much everything is going to be LC now that I work with, uh, in the data center. Um, maybe a little, uh, a little bit of SC here and there, but I haven't seen the, um, the ST connectors in, in like forever or the bayonet ones. I've, those TC connectors or something like that. A couple different connector types. You know, there, there's a hundred different connector types for these. Um, 
and insofar as I can tell for the the um, the connector types uh, on on the top there this seems to be just a standard VFL connector type I don't I don't know what connector type that is. Uh, it's got like a, a little ceramic insert in there and you just shove the cable in and, and that's how it works. Um, I haven't, uh, you know, I haven't seen that. Um, uh, it did stick initially. I, I had to get a pair of needle nose pliers to get it off and it pops off pretty easily now. Uh, it just, I guess, needed to be exercised from the factory. And uh, that right there is, uh, of course, the connector uh, for the uh, LC. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with the functionality of this, but since it's Linux, uh, there is something I want to take a look at, and that's the network interfaces. Ping one nine two one six eight zero dot. I think it's two two one. Yeah, it's online. Okay, wonder what's open. And map two dot. Two one six eight dot two two one. Okay, so this does match what I'm seeing in LLDP as Kunos. Interesting. Uh, let's try root, and it's probably going to prompt me for a password. Oh, you, you've got to be fucking kidding me. Uh, uh, what? Uh, I, so there's the SD card. Wow. This is so bad. Uh, Let's see who's in password. Uh, okay. Uh, cat. See what we Wow. So, yeah, that's pretty bad. You should definitely change the password on there. But Well, thanks for watching. You know, for 300 bucks, I'm pretty happy.